Hey guys, how's it going? Welcome to Evening Prayer. Um, so I only found one prayer request. Uh, I don't know if my comments are having issues or whatever, but uh, I went through and everything looked okay. Um, I'm trying to think if I saw any others anywhere else. I know I'm going to lift Sister Jennifer up because I know she's still got some issues going on. But somebody... Uh, knew that I had, hadn't seen comment before uh, lifted up the children the uh, child trafficking and uh, pedophilia and stuff like that which they're trying to pass a law saying that pedophiles have a right to satisfy their sexual urges what I want to know is is the people who agree with that and are trying to pass that law are they willing to offer up their young children so this doesn't make any sense to me, but this is the way the world is. Amazingly enough, this is the stuff that was going on in Sodom and Gomorrah. That's why it's pile of ash 3,000 years later, still there, nothing grows. This is the stuff that was happening in Egypt, the stuff that was happening all over the place. And it's the majority of men tend, you know, mankind tends to go that way. And it's just weird, but... That the depravity of man is evident. But this is what we got going on now. Now, you get into the whole full-term abortion thing and all that. When you look deep down into these things, into where their roots come from, it all goes back to Molech and Balaam back in the Bible. Uh, they used to offer their children up to Molech. And they would take the babies and they would chuck them in this little pan thing and they'd fry on the statue of Molech that had a fire in it. But funny enough, they actually have one. There, somebody made one and they got it put up. Um, and some of the rituals involved, uh, um, intercourse with children too. So it, it, the kids never had a chance back then. It's amazing. Anybody ever even made it to adulthood, but that's the kind of crazy stuff that was going on. And the earth will, just like the Bible says, the earth will disclose her blood, not only from the saints, but from the children. See the people that are involved in this stuff. And not taking a stand against it. Don't fully realize what they're doing. And they don't realize that there's a heavy toll to be paid for this stuff. Because Jesus talked about this. That, that Because that was the only prayer request I found, it, it, was, it became the subject for tonight's evening prayer video. And um, what's wrong with people? At some point, do they... Do they not stop and think about what they're doing? Evidently not. It's about self-satisfaction. And it just goes to show that some hearts are just truly evil and they're not going to change. Um, amazingly, and, and we wonder sometimes why people like that get away with stuff and, and go their whole lives and never change. Why didn't God do something? Well, he was giving them a chance to repent. He loves his children, his creation. He wants them to repent. He wants them to turn back so he can heal them. That's why it seems like the bad guy always wins. God is trying to give them a window to change because what's coming is going to be far above and beyond anything anybody can imagine. People think they know how this stuff's going to be, uh, even, the, even if they've read a little bit of it in the Bible. It's going to be a thousand times worse than they think. They don't realize just how bad this is. We've never had a worldwide earthquake. We've had earthquakes bounce around the, the world, but we've never had a world where the whole earth, where it shook so bad, the earth is going to tilt. Now, take that back. We have had one that did tilt the earth a little bit a couple years ago. It tilted the earth four degrees on its axis. That was a real bad one. That set stuff off all over the place, but we had big tsunamis from that too. Uh, several cities over around India got completely wiped out. There was nothing left. There's a toll to be paid for this. There's a price to be paid for these kinds of things. And the children, and there's very, very specific scripture, the children are very important to the Lord because they can't defend themselves. They can't earn a living. They can't take care of themselves until they're taught to. That's why they need a protector. That's what we're supposed to be. I remember a, a movie. I can't remember the name of it. Uh, it's an old movie. And uh, things got crazy. The world fell apart. So this guy took his wife and kids out into the 
wilderness and they had a cave and they scouted it out you know they, they saw it coming they had a cave and they started surviving and the dad said we're not going to become animals we're human beings we and they were christian and we're human beings we we are about we have our senses we're going to stay clean shaven we're going to keep our hair cut and we're going to keep everything clean and we're going to live and we're going to keep our senses about us. We know what right is. We're going to do right. And that's what they did. And that's the one thing that set them apart from other people. When other people just became animals, these people stood out because they, they, they kept their senses. They, they knew what was right and they stuck by what was right. That's something that makes us stand out. We know what's right and we stand for that. And people look at us funny. Even when it comes to the, the children thing. I can't tell you how much hate I got from standing up against that full-term abortion thing. The the day after, because they did it at midnight, the next morning I found out it, what New York did. And I was on videos do, raising all kinds of cane about that stuff. And I caught so much hate for that. And all I ever heard from, from people, mainly women, was uh, my body, my choice. I was like, but that baby isn't your body. That's their body. What about their choice? You're taking it away from them. And I hope I got to a few of them. I hope maybe some, you know, some people changed. I don't know. There's a lot of hatred in the world. And it's disturbing. People that I know, personally, people I serve with in the Army, went on the other side of that. And I'm like, I know who you were and what you stood for before. What happened? You would have never agreed to, agreed to this before. What happened? One of the biggest problems is people give in to peer pressure. And that's one of the things, I was thinking about this earlier today, that's one of the things that's always uh, had me on the outs with everybody. I've had people tell me, well, why can't you just be like everyone else? Because everyone else is wrong in what they're doing and they know it. I'm not going to do that. I know that's wrong. I'm not going to be a part of it. You just, just just, keep your mouth shut and just, no. And I had, I had one guy really adamant about it and it was, it was at a job. And he finally pushed too far, and I was like, look, just because you're a coward and scared to stand, stand up for what's right doesn't mean I'm not, a, I have to be one. He said, I'm not scared to stand up for what's right, then why aren't you? I said, now's your chance to prove it. Well, I don't have to prove anything. I said, well, I am going to prove it, because I'm going to stand up for what's right. I don't care what you think. I don't care what anyone else thinks. Don't like it, fire me. I'll go home and I'll find me another job. But I will not just bow down and just do what you guys say even though I know it's wrong. Actually, after I left, several of those guys got fired <laughs> because the company found out what was going on. Anyway, if we don't stand up for what's right, who will? If we don't stand up for the children, who will? I've always had this mentality after I had kids. When I'm watching somebody else's kids, or if I'm even if their kids are teenagers or even adults, when, if I'm there and they say they take off and go to the store, we had some friends that they would, hey, we're going to go to the store real quick, we'll be right back down at the corner, and their kids were in the house. The minute they walked out that door, those kids became my kids, and I would defend them just like they were mine. And I've always been that way. Uh, if, if I'm babysitting somebody's kids, or I'm watching a nephew or a niece, that's my child when the parent isn't there, and I will protect them as such. That to me, there's no difference between them and my own children. I will be exactly the same with them as I was with my children. And I've told parents this, and they're like, why would you do that? But because if something happened, wouldn't you want me to, to, to protect your children if you weren't here? Instead of just throwing my hands in the air and running away? Well, yeah. I was like, I mean, it, it's not a wrong mentality. Come on. That we all should be this way. And that was funny because every time I would say something similar to that or say that statement around adults, they would always turn their head and look down and they wouldn't look at me. And it's like, uh, okay, I think I see what's going on here. So consequently, over the years, I, I've abandoned a lot of friendships because I see what, how people are. And, you know, I got off Facebook because I saw their Facebook post where they wouldn't stand up and defend their children. They wouldn't stand up for what's right. And I'm looking at these posts and I'm like, I can't believe you even posted that. But then I saw how many people agreed with them. It's like, no, this world is done. People have lost their mind. So we're going to go through a couple of scriptures about what Jesus thinks about 
children and how we should defend for the children. Then we're going to pray about this. Matthew 18, 10. See that you do not despise one of these little ones, for I tell you that in heaven their angels always see the face of my Father who is in heaven. That's kind of daunting and scary. So somebody molests a little girl or a little boy, like those Catholic preachers doing it, what, what, what did they think's happening? God knows about that. There's going to be a payment that's going to come from that stuff. And what's terrible is those guys knew better. All adult men and, and, and women. Women do it too. Which is really shocking when I found out the percentages of how many women do it. It's equal with men. It's bad. They know better. But because they don't have God in their life. Those, those Catholic priests weren't saved. If they were saved, they would know better than to do that. No, I can't do this. This is ridiculous. The Lord doesn't approve of this. And turn and run away. If a reasonable adult starts to have that kind of temptation, those kinds of thoughts, the very first thing they should do is go and say, I need to get some counseling because there's some weird stuff going on. They need to go talk to elders. Bring it out in the open so they can pray for them and lay hands on them. And if they're like, hey guys, look, something's really weird. I can't be around kids because I feel uncomfortable that the fact that these thoughts are entering my mind. I need to be removed from a position and I'm going to go and see if I can deal with this. And then go and, and take a season with the Lord and get that stuff dealt with. But they don't do that. They try to hide it. They won't even, they won't even uh, defrock those guys. They'll just send them to some other church somewhere out in the middle of nowhere where nobody knows them. Terrible. So how many more kids are going to get attacked? Ephesians 6, 4, Fathers, do not provoke your children to anger, but bring them up in the discipline and instruction of the Lord. Godly discipline is the appropriate amount needed for the offense. And then explain to them why that happened. That was one of the things that I did with my kids. I spanked my kids. I spanked them in the store, right in front of everybody. I don't care. Hey, stop it. <laughs> you need to stop that stuff. I'm not scared of going to jail. I'm not scared of what people say. That not their my kids, not their kids. The reason the reason why the world is the way it is is because we have four generations of kids who weren't spanked, and now they've grown up thinking they're entitled. They can do what they want. And I, but I always told my kids, "Do you know why you got in trouble?" No, or they'd say, "Yeah," and then I would tell them why they got in trouble. I said, "You can't do that," and I would explain to them why. Both of my kids, they're very sure and secure in what right and wrong is. Colossians 3.21 Fathers, do not provoke your children lest they become discouraged. One of the things you don't want to do with your kids, especially if you're a Christian, is browbeat them. Because this can be something that could actually push them away from the faith. And you don't want to do that. So one of the things I had in my own family... Uh, with my parents was this that same kind of thing and um, but it never discouraged me because uh, my relationship was a lot tighter with the Lord than, than theirs was evidently and I saw things it, it, and it's always been that way now that I think about it that, that I've always seen things differently than other people but the way I looked at it with the Lord it, it's this me and him it wasn't me my dad or me my mom and him it was just me and him so even though that stuff happened, I, I didn't blame it on the Lord. I blamed it on the person that did it. You know, uh, th Another thing that we have a problem with nowadays is people don't have any sense of accountability. They don't take accountability for their actions anymore. If you made a decision that caused this and, or put you in a position for this to happen, that's your fault. Don't blame anybody else. It's your fault. But that, that's not how the world works nowadays. Psalm 127.3, Behold, children are a heritage from the Lord, the fruit of the womb, the womb, a reward. Having children is an extremely huge blessing from God. Do all kids come out good? No. Do all kids go the way you, you want them to go even though you train them up? No. You do the best you can. But they're still a blessing and they're still a reward. Having kids is, a, is an amazing thing. Especially when people look at how young me and my wife still are. Oh, our kids are in their 20s. You know, past their mid-20s. Really? Well, you guys had your kids young. Yeah, we wanted to have them young. 
That way we could enjoy doing stuff with them in their age group, you know, without being old fuddy-duddies. Proverbs 22, 6, train up a child in the way he should go. Even when he is old, he will not depart from it. If you instill the basic principles in a child, even if you're not a Christian, the, the basic principles of what right and wrong is, they won't get involved in those things because it'll always be nagging at them in the back of their mind. <clears throat> um, that's a good enough right there. Let me stop right there. Okay, so... The Lord is takes very, he really focuses on kids. Now you go and read those in context, you see even more stuff that he talks about with kids. Uh, children, I know, I know the Lord is really upset about all these, these abortions going on, especially when they, they approved full term. Because the way they do that is horrible. And, and any of it, any kind of it, that's life. That's a gift. That's a reward from God. There's some women that go there every two weeks, three weeks, every month. Because I don't know if they're prostitutes or what the deal is, but they're always in there. They've had to turn women away because they go there so often. It's like, what? So the Lord's not going to be happy about that stuff that, that, that people are doing with their kids. Now, we do the best we can with kids. We try to help. We try to teach them. My little nephew, I'm trying to teach him about the Lord. He's grasping the concept. He had a little spell there where he was starting to have some issues. Uh, he's doing quite a bit better now than what he was because we, 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 we reasoned it out. And uh, then when I finally got my brother and, and my wife on the same page, because we're the three that watch him, uh, then everything started working a whole lot better. Kids are a blessing, and they're gonna be. They're gonna test you. They're gonna try things. They're gonna. But the one thing you don't do is you don't. You don't take out what you what's wrong with you or what bothers you or what's your issues are out on them. That's the one thing we don't do. Because they don't know any better. They can't defend themselves. They can't take care of themselves. And how you treat a child, especially when they're young about from three to eight uh, it make it becomes a pretty good indicator of how they're gonna how they're gonna be when they get older a lot of people don't realize that and they are I see it they're nasty to their kids in that age bracket after about 12 you're gonna have a hard time changing it if you can at all so we do what we can and if you see kids in need you try to help I, I've, I've done that all my life, too, even when I was a teenager, uh, late teens. I would always try to help out kids, and they would talk about this and that, and give them advice, and tell them what I went through, and stuff like that. It's a weird world we live in. I got all these memories flooding back from my past now, all, these, all those times, and it's just... When, when, when do people figure it's enough? When do they stop? And especially as it comes to child trafficking, how do they justify doing that? Is it just because they're so hot for money that they think it's okay to do that and that's not there's not going to be any repercussions from it? And how many kids? How many? It's a terrible state that the world is in and what, what people do. And, and the evil and the wickedness that man has within him. Every one of us has it. But those of us that are born again have a brand new way of looking at these things. And the incentive to stay away from that and to deny those things and to stand against them is much stronger in us than it is in those who don't have it. But there's always an opportunity and a chance that somebody that's doing those kinds of things can change. And the Lord gives them plenty of time to do it, but... There's some of them he doesn't. He just takes them out right away. So we do what we can with what we have. We're, a, we're such a small group now, it's hard for us to have any real positive effect on anything. But we do what we can, one at a time. Let's get into some prayer. Lord, we come before you this evening to give you the praise, honor, and the glory. To lift your name up, to worship you, to give thanks to you for the all the all all that you do for us. For protecting the children. Tonight's subject is about kids. And we have these battles 
where we're battling either demonic influence on a child. Been there, done that recently. We have bad parenting. We have to help try to help the parents. If that's a tender area to, to get into. How do you do it properly? How do you make a positive effect? Uh, especially somebody who's taking out their issues on the child. Uh, the verbal abuse, the mental abuse, the physical abuse, you know. The abortion law. Lord, when they passed that in New York last year, I was all over that. And it's, what shocked me is how long it took for other people to get on board. And it's like, what's happening here? I figured people would have been, I mean, you should have stood up against all of it, but that especially. Our world is sick and people are crazy. They have lost their minds. Lord, as Christians, we stand fully against all of that. Life is precious. All life. And any abortion is wrong. Any abortion is to be denied. Any abortion, any, any, um, abuse of a child, whatever form it comes in, is wrong and is to be denied and stood against. The child trafficking nowadays is bad. And we, we don't, we tend not to think about that because it's not in the news. But Lord, it's, it's forefront and, and it's very, very bad. A lot of kids, a lot of kids that go missing end up in that world and see all forms of abuse. Lord, we pray and lift them up you protect the children the ones that are safe that we can have a positive effect on help us have a positive effect on them help us get at least a knowledge of you in their in their system those that we can't we lift them up in prayer by intercession that you deliver them from the the bondage they're in that you get them out of the the trafficking world out of the sex trade out of the pedophilia all this shut all this down You can only imagine how bad it's going to be after the tribulation starts. Because when people in that level of stress do very, very weird things. And it's like a losing battle. We can't win it. Because it's so, most of the world is involved in it. But we can certainly pray about it, Lord. So we lift those kids up that you deliver them out of those situations, bring them back home to their parents, that you get them saved. If, if, they have, if they have to be in that position, get them saved in that position so they can help the others around them. And those that do those, those wicked things, Lord, punish them to salvation. Get them in this life and punish them to salvation. That they will repent and turn from that and get saved and change and become something better. And instead of harming children, help children. But this is one of those prayers where I don't even have the right words to say. I, I'm, I'm relying on the Holy Spirit to give me the right words because I don't have the right words for this. Because it's such a huge issue. Lord, I pray that you stop all abortions. I pray you stop all child trafficking. I pray you stop all abuse of children. An adult can overcome those things. Most children cannot. And I know it doesn't make you happy at all that that's happening. You've put me in situations where I've been able to, it, from my point of view, somewhat affect positively situations like that. But when I'm not there, I don't know how things are going. I hope they're going good. And this has been for many years in my life. What else can we do? How else can we help them? Lord, if there's other ways that we can help, show us what they are so we can act. So we can be a part of the solution and not a part of the problem. So we can stand up as, as Christians and tell the world, no. It's not right, y'all. Or if we see it in our community, no, that's not right. I lift up all my brethren in this case for a conviction 
to be a benefit and a help to the children, to, to ponder those things and think about those things. Maybe we can't affect them directly, but maybe we can affect them positively indirectly. It's a harsh subject. It's a hard, hard thing to deal with. And it's a hard thing to, to pray on because what do we pray? Holy Spirit, I'm relying on you for the right words in this prayer. I also lift up my sister Jennifer for the issues she's going through. She has an air conditioning problem. She has a hot water heater problem. She's got struggles in her family. Much of it, it some of it involves children. Lord, I pray you positively affect that situation. And I pray that for any believer that has that kind of situation going on or something similar, that you positively affect that situation. You get in that life and you change that situation to the better so that the kids aren't corrupted. There's always a chance. So we, we don't lose hope. Thank you, Lord, for your mercy and grace. Thank you for your great love. We've... We've failed as a church because things have fallen down and come apart the last 60 years so badly. And man as a whole let it happen and didn't stand up. We're all guilty. Didn't stand up and, and, and stand out against these things. We're all guilty. I'm thankful, very thankful, and we thank you today that you've opened our eyes to it so that we can stand up, because not everybody's exposed to the same things. You've brought it to our attention. You've opened our eyes to this. Lord, show us how we can positively affect this, because we want to be a blessing. Well, amazing that our, our understanding verse is about speech. <laughs> One of the hard things, in, especially in this situation, but in other situations, is how we address it verbally. How do you address something like that? How do you engage with somebody like that? Colossians 4.6 says, Let your speech always be gracious, seasoned with salt, so that you may know how you ought to answer each person. Now, we know it's different for everybody. We know some people save with compassion. Some people save with conviction. Some people you got to pull them out, by the, out of the fire by their hair. How do we help a situation like this? It's rough times. It's a rough world. A lot of strange things happening. And uh, it, uh, it certainly isn't something to take lightly. So Lord, when we're, if we're exposed to a situation like that, give us the right words. Speech seasoned with salt and, and gracious so that we can address it and, and, help properly prayers like this are hard and subjects like this are hard to pray on because it, it's it's hard to know exactly what to pray for and, and the right thing luckily lord you know exactly what the right thing is to do and you know what's in our hearts and the holy spirit speaks on our behalf making intercession for us thank you holy spirit so, Lord, in your infinite wisdom and in your will, answer these prayers. And all the other prayers that we've lifted up that haven't been answered or that are in a process of being answered, Lord, please please show your love and your light. Show your power in answering. Show the, your miracles in answering these prayers. And when you do, I pray everyone who has a prayer answer stops and gives thanks for that. If they haven't right now by intercession, I give thanks for them. If they, if people haven't given thanks for prayers that you've answered right here, right now, I give thanks for them. That they have, that, that, that you have answered a prayer and you have blessed them and changed their life. Sometimes we get busy and forget. Well, we can help each other out in that work, that department. And your word talks about that. So we give thanks for those people. For the wonderful things that you do for us, for the wonderful things that you, you, you help us with, and even though these children are being abused, you are watching, you are waiting, you are paying attention, and when the time is right, you are going to act. I fully trust and have faith that you'll do that, and you will deal with those situations properly, and you will get those people 
those kids out of those situations. And you'll get some people saved. Thank you, Lord, for your mercy and grace. Thank you for your great, great love. Thank you for this salvation we have. Thank you for this time we can come together and pray about tough subjects like this. And thank you for the brothers and sisters here who come from lives of abuse, and yet they're still saved. They still trust in you. They still believe in you. Through the storm, through the battle, through the abuse, they came through it, and they found you. No matter what, if we're destined to find you, we'll find you. If we were called according to your purpose, we will find you. No matter what, no matter what happens. There are a lot of us who have been through abuse. I can say that I, I haven't been through that kind of abuse. Mine was much different. Mine was on a, a different scale and came from almost everybody I interacted with. But abuse is abuse. And through all the abuse we've all gone through, in whatever form it was, and whatever way of life it was, we've still found you. We pray those kids have, find you too. We love you, Lord, and we thank you so much for everything that you do for us. It is in your name that we pray. Amen. Thank you guys for joining me for evening prayer. This is a hard subject to pray on, but think about it. If you've come from a childhood of abuse, you still found the Lord. All of those children who are caught up in the tra child trafficking, the sex trafficking, the pedophilia, they'll find him too. If they're called according to his purpose, they'll find him. The Lord is watching. The Lord is keeping record, and these people will not go unpunished. They may live their whole life and nothing happened to them, but when they get to the other side, it's a much different story. What we want to happen, more than anything, is that they get saved and repent. Because that type of healing goes into all the people that they've offended and can lead more to salvation. That's how merciful our God is. That's how gracious he is. And we need to be that gracious too. But let me tell you something. In the heat of the moment, I see somebody going at a kid and it's not, you know, it's out of the, whatever. I'm, I'm, I'm going to fall on them. Like a telephone pole in the street. I'm going to fall on them. I see some uh, kidnapping. I'm all over them. I will go up to my last breath and trying to save that child. And if it means taking that guy's life, then I'm going to take that guy's life because I'm not going to let that child get taken. So, but what we hope is that the situation goes a different direction, a better direction. And we rely on our Lord and put trust in him for that. Thank you guys very much. I appreciate you guys very much. Thank you for your prayers. I had uh, actually got attacked while doing a video earlier, I have not posted the video. Um, I think the Lord's going to allow me to do it. I'm not, not sure yet. Um, it was right in the video while I was going through. It was just a random headlines video. It was just nonsense talking. We weren't even covering anything specific. And instantly pain. And it was right where I'd get my migraines at. And it was sharp, instantaneous. And then almost as quick as it came, it went away. So I know the enemy, he, he's trying everything he can, and the Lord's right there knocking him down, go get away, not letting him do it. We're all under those attacks, you guys. Stay strong through those attacks. Live the armor in Ephesians 6. When you come under attack, go to the Lord in prayer. That's your bastion. That's where you hide. Go to the Lord in prayer, and he will chase the devil away. Because when the Holy Spirit rises up in defense, he can't do anything. Can't touch you. Use the tools that you have. Use the authority that you have in Jesus' name. Because we don't have to put up with that stuff. And we don't have to walk in that kind of fear anymore. The people that thought they had control over us by using the word improperly for the last 60 plus years, they don't have power. All their power is gone. We know the truth. Because we read the word and study the word and do it in a way prayerfully so that the Lord will teach us. And he does. He teaches us. We don't have to deal with that anymore. And we can be strong and we can overcome. And that's the goal, to be strong and to overcome. Love you guys. 
Bless you all in Jesus' name. And I will see you guys in the next video.